Hello, Mr. Brown here, your science teacher. I make videos for students of all ages. So today, gather the whole family and let's talk about the science of hurricanes. Check out this picture. Hurricanes are just big, giant, spinning storms. Here we are from up in space looking down on one and they're big. Some of them are enormous. Here we are in the International Space Station looking down at this big giant spinning storm. I can see the sun back there in the background and you're going to need a sun to create hurricanes. That's where the energy comes from. Now most of the power of the hurricane is found near the center as you can see with these reds and oranges and I look out Dominican Republic Puerto Rico Cuba you guys are in the path so you better watch out it's coming in fact these islands they get hit almost every single year with hurricanes hurricane season goes from June until the end of November usually and sometimes even you'll get two hurricanes happening at the same time sometimes you'll get three happening at the same time like you see in this graphic here now if you look closely you'll notice that they're all spinning in the same direction is that just coincidence no it's science actually that's called the Coriolis effect and it has to do with the fact that our planet spins it spins around once every 24 hours. We call it a day, right? And that gives storms their spin. So every hurricane that happens in the northern hemisphere will always spin counterclockwise, and every hurricane that forms in the southern hemisphere below the equator will always spin clockwise. It's science, right? So what do you need to form a hurricane? Well, you need warm seawater and warm air what warms this stuff it's the sun right that's why hurricanes generally form down in the tropical regions of our planet as opposed to the cold polar region because it needs heat from the sun to gain power right so as we gain power we go from a, a mild little thunderstorm up to a tropical depression we gain more energy we become a tropical storm we gain more energy and we become a hurricane right if you live in one of the orange areas of the United States you're at high risk and you're probably gonna get hit by a hurricane at least once a year if not more if you're in the yellow zones you're at a, a mild risk and if you're in the white zone like we are here in Wisconsin <laughs> you're just in the safe zone that hurricanes can't reach you you're too far away all right so Hurricanes come in different categories. The wimpy little category one, the somewhat distressing category two, category three. Now things are getting serious. Look out for category fours. That's extreme weather, but the most dangerous and deadly is the Cat Five with winds in excess of 155 miles an hour. What's that like to be in? Well, it's really windy right like you see it knocks over trees and it flips over cars uh, cat 5 is nothing to mess around with that's a strong storm so uh if you hear a hurricane watch that means the hurricane might possibly come by you you, you want to be aware if you hear a hurricane warning that means we expect it to hit so uh you better run for cover the anatomy of a hurricane a hurricane is a giant spinning storm is what it is and around its central axis of rotation we find the eye of the storm every hurricane uh, looks like this they all have the same shape they all rotate around a central eye no it's not a real eye like you see through it's just the center of rotation of the storm and it is very strangely calm in the center there so we've sent airplanes into the eye of these storms and it is really calm right very uh gentle but around you is this wall of storms rotating around you it's a really weird interesting place to be all right so here's a graphic of every hurricane that has hit 
uh, in the last 150 years. And you'll see up in the Arctic, we don't get as much, it's too cold. Down near Antarctica, we don't get much, it's too cold. And right along the equator, uh, the Coriolis effect, that spinning motion doesn't really work well. And so all the hurricanes are slightly above the equator or slightly below the equator. And I'm looking at you, Gulf of Mexico, that is a dangerous place to be, as well as over here in the Philippines. Those are, that is a Hurricane Central. Look out. All right, so what is the difference between a hurricane, a cyclone, and a typhoon? Uh, nothing. It's, it's, it's all the same thing. It's just a regional, different variations on how they want to call it. Uh, it's just the same thing, right? There's no difference. Okay, so how do you name a hurricane? So they they go through and do it alphabetically. So the first hurricane of the year gets a name with the letter A, like Arthur or Alberto. The second one is a letter B, like Bill or Bertha, and so on and so forth. And so alphabetically. So if you hear them say, oh, uh, hurricane, like, Charlie, then you know that's the third one of the season because it's the letter C. Okay. Now, what the hurricanes do is it pushes the ocean up onto the beach, and that's called a storm surge, right? And if you live along the beach, you need to be concerned about this. I, I like this graphic. It's got a little protective dune. Yeah, I didn't think that thing was too protective. That storm surge just went right up and over and uh, swamped out your beach front home, right? Uh, this restaurant right here found out that, hey, boss, do you mind if I take the day off? No, get back to work. We might have customers, but we're, we're underwater. Uh, all right, so if you get into that water, it's dangerous. You got to look out for rip currents. These are backwards pulling currents that will literally pull you out to sea. Many people have died by getting caught in these things. They're super dangerous, right? And these these weird currents have a way of eroding away the the beach, right? So th this person's house found out the hard way what happens when your beach gets eroded by storms. So how do they predict where the storm is going to head? Well, they don't really know. So what they do is they make a probability map. This is where we think the storm is going to go. They enter all the data into their computer, and the computer makes a forecast of where we think it's going to head. And the more days out into the future, you can see it gets wider and wider as we are more uncertain about its path, right? So here you can see uh, the National Weather Service has set up a couple possible hurricane paths. No, nobody knows the future, and so they just work with the data they have to give you as much warning as they can, right? And it's all about warning. So if you are a governor of Florida, you're always warning your citizens about hurricanes every year, right? And this governor here says, this storm will kill you. All right, so what he's trying to do is convince people to pack up their stuff and leave for a week or two or maybe more and save their lives because a deadly storm is on the way. Uh, but a lot of people, they just ignore it. I'm not going anywhere. I got my emergency kit. I got my flashlight. I got my water. Uh, I'm good to go. I got my checklist, so I'm just going to ride out the storm, right? Well, okay, so... If you do want to leave, Florida is all set up with evacuation routes. These are designated highways to get you to safety. So where is safety? It's anywhere not in Florida. Just leave Florida because Florida is the danger zone. Uh, head north, basically. And what they'll do is they'll shut down uh, both lanes of traffic on the freeway and head everyone out of town. So nobody's heading into the storm. Everyone's leaving the other way. Uh, it's... Well, you got to get going because now it's too late. Once the bridges get knocked out, now you're now you're trapped. Okay, so that's why they have warnings is because sometimes you get stuck and you can't leave. Uh, like this family right here. So they had to go up on the roof and they have uh, they made a little sign here SOS and hopefully they'll flag down a helicopter, right? So uh, that's why they say, you know, take these warnings seriously. Here's someone's up on the roof with a big old message, please help, we got no food, no water, and 
why do they make messages on the roof? Well, they're trying to flag down helicopters, right? So here the National Guard comes in to save a family that's trapped up on their roof. Okay, so the aftermath of a hurricane is a mess. That's the best way to put it. You've got the Army comes in, the National Guard comes in and tries to help people, tries to get them to safety. And there's water everywhere. And this is an interesting thing. They had to evacuate a prison, right? So they got a bunch of buses. These are all prisoners from a prison and they got trapped on the freeway and they couldn't go anywhere. And so you've got all these prison guards with guns and all these prisoners. That is a tense, tricky situation there, right? So the brave men and women of the National Guard will come in and try to help people. But it is dangerous walking around in this water up to your chest. That's not just water, all right? There's oil, there's toxic chemicals, human waste, dead bodies. It is a really unsafe environment. Not only that, is some people get the bright idea of smashing into stores and taking items without paying for it. Okay, so this is called looting, and it's an issue. After a big hurricane, you'll have people that break into these stores and take a bunch of stuff, and they're stealing stuff. And I'll tell you what, that is a great way to get yourself shot. People do not like looters, so don't be that guy, right? Yeah, just pay for your stuff, right? So hurricanes are deadly and costly. You can see a lot of the deadliest U.S. hurricanes here on this map. Uh, Louisiana and New Orleans show up a lot, and they've been hit literally thousands of times by hurricanes in that part of the country and in the future they're going to get hit thousands of times more it, it's just nature it's just science right so the best way to explore the aftermath of a hurricane is from a helicopter get up out of the mess and you'll often see presidents will come down there after a hurricane and fly around and oh it looks like this airport got flooded here and flights are canceled and there is just a lot of damage. Hurricanes are powerfully damaging. But the, this car got flipped over on its side and this farmer lost some of its livestock. It is a mess of death and destruction. Yeah, I mean, they need help after hurricanes. Uh, here we can see a bunch of boats got all swamped and, and broken, right? Look at this before and after. Everything's in a nice row and a hurricane comes in and smashes it. So. If you are coming to the rescue after a hurricane, it is a dangerous environment. There's broken boards, there's nails sticking out, there's oil, gasoline, toxic chemicals, dead bodies. It is, it's really bad, right? That's, that's hurricanes. All right, so thank you for joining me today on the science of hurricanes. I'll see you next time. I'll see you, bye.